साथ में मरने वाला हूँ अब नो इमेजिन लाइक आई वॉज जस्ट सिक्स मंथ्स ऑफ सर्विस लाइक एंड दिस गाई वॉज अबाउट a senior in a person movies based on armed forces is actually far from reality okay to be very honest with you uh, fortunately now we have the women soldiers women officers also yes. they are since long what kind of uh, facilities does an army officer gets from the government for the family sadly i had to hang my uniform and you joined the armed forces so uh, how was the journey for you shooting a very special podcast with uh, our special guest coming uh, with us on this uh, special occasion of independence day lieutenant colonel ankur sabarwal uh, taking this conversation forward sir just a brief introduction about yourself for the audience please thank you so much and thanks infinite group for having me on this uh, on your podcast and uh, it's, it's actually an auspicious occasion for all of us yes. independence is always close to our heart uh, so i uh, born and brought up in delhi okay uh, joined the armed forces in june 2002 as a lieutenant in the bihar regiment mm-hmm. there after had uh, three tenures in jammu and kashmir one in nagaland one in mizoram right and there after uh, uh, psychology as a subject used to entice me a lot mm-hmm. so i switched direction and started get got into the zone of talent acquisition in the corporate parlance as they say Yes. for the armed forces right when we were acquiring talent in the officer cadre of the armed forces okay it's a primarily psychology based interview mm. uh, we can talk about it a little later and right. uh, so i did that for almost 7 years mm. in between for a year i went into rehabilitation of my veterans when they were stepping okay. out how we can make sure that they get upskilled and their life becomes much better right and their standard of living mm. and then after 21 years last year in april i took uh, released from the armed forces right sadly i had to hang my uniform and then i joined philips uh, in philips machine tools india philips right. education as their vice president okay looking after their projects in india mm-hmm. middle east and south east asia okay. and couple of weeks back rather very fresh i have mm-hmm. now started my entrepreneurship journey right with invincio services that's great so talking about invincio uh, we will come on to it uh, but starting from when you joined the armed forces so uh, how was the journey for you the training period uh, for you at army uh, armed forces is actually not a career right. it's a way of life right so either you are so it, that is why when we talk about why there is so much of rejection rates and people not getting recommended despite being very passionate about it right uh, it, if somebody joins it oh, okay this is one of the careers and mm-hmm. you know i can see career progression and then maybe incentives and rewards mm-hmm. so on forces <laughs> there is nothing of those kind the, that kind it is uh, more of your uh, you have to be mentally attuned so the, the moment you join armed forces you are actually volunteering to abenicio sacrifice your life for the country yes now getting somebody to do that mm-hmm. and sign up for that and then offer letter so no offer letter can actually be exactly. that so this is our my journey started uh, i joined nd in 1998 mm-hmm. after clearing my written and my services selection board interview and uh, life has been amazing since then it's been good so uh, because you have been through all these army training uh, we see a lot of movies you know telling about how intense the training is they are ask you to run 20 kilometers 10 kilometers so is it uh, exactly how how it looks on the movie sets or is it uh, much more difficult than that so um, so generally i say that movies are reflection of a society and society is a reflection of what is happening in the movies right but arm movies based on armed forces is actually far from reality okay <laughs> to be very honest with you because uh, most of the movies that we saw when we were youngsters mm. uh, uh, that was the major saab and that kind of era mm. salami and right. those kind of movies that we saw when i was a child mm. uh, it was very glorified you know that uh, there is there is discipline yes obviously but uh, you know somebody is running away with the instructor's daughter or yeah. doing something like that eloping and doing those kind of things mm. so nothing of that sort ever takes place right yes running and physical strengthening physical training physical conditioning with the kind of terrains and the kind of places we are deployed in mm-hmm. it's far more difficult it's right. uh, so physical agility as well as your mental robustness is what is uh, made sure that in during training that 
gets elevated to an unprecedented level. Right. So the runs are not 10, 20 kilometers. Mm -hmm. They're in multiples of that. <laughs> okay. And in a single day. Sometimes in a single day. Yes. Right. And uh, how this training session looks like? Because I have heard about uh, um, a lot of army people talking about it that when they start, there are a lot of uh, casualties in terms of people get injured because they have not been through such intense training before that. So how this uh, a day in an army school or a, or a certain training for army looks like? So it's very, very scientific. It's uh, we, we don't uh, just throw people in the burning oil. Okay, now you have to do on your own, mm. something like that. It's very structured. So when you join, say, in any any of the academies, National Defense Academy, Indian Military Academy, or Officers Training Academy, depending on the duration of the training, mm. so the end deliverable is clear. Mm. That the person will be coming out as an armed forces officer. So he's supposed to lead the... He, he is meant to lead the troops. Right. So obviously, in every aspect of his personality, the physical strength, his mental robustness, mm. his ability to be creative problem solving that we talk about, or any of those areas, mm. he is supposed to be at its peak. Right. He or she. Uh, fortunately, now we have the women soldiers, women officers also. Yes. Yeah, since long. So, uh, when I say that training is very structured, so there are certain ethos of those training, like discipline, mm. uh, punctuality, mm. and apart from mental and physical strengths and everything. So the timings and everything is laid out. Mm. So on a particular day, you generally get up, go for your, um, you know, run or your drill training, so that your physically as well as your uh, discipline gets improved. Mm. And then you have your classes proper in which your weapon training, service subjects, your tactics, strategy planning, and those things are taught. Yes. And then in the evening you have your games so that you know bon homie, camaraderie, and those things also develop. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you have a little bit of studies. Um, if, if time permits, yes. then you just you call it time for that. Yes. Okay. Because uh, uh, we have seen uh, a lot of uh, people talking about this that uh, if a person joins army, uh, he has to leave his family back. And uh, what kind of uh, facilities does an army officer get from the government for the family because he has left it along and there is nobody to take care of them now? So, what uh, I would actually highlight here is that in India, it's a volunteer organization. The yes. armed forces is like any other organization that we have. And like I initially, like I mentioned, our offer letter is you are signing up to sacrifice yourself. Yes, the uh, government or the organization takes care, it goes to great lengths to take care of our families who are back home. Right. Like when we get deployed in a field area, mm. the families back home, they are given separate accommodation. Okay. There are military hospitals to take care of their medical needs. Okay. There are army public schools where our children can study. Mm -hmm. There are uh, the basic needs are met in and around the cantonment so that you know the families don't have to travel too much mm. to meet their basic requirements. So those uh, so basic uh, needs are met. Mm. However, now that the aspirations have started increasing, so obviously those things are also being taken care of. Right. And uh, because you have uh, served the army for more than 20 years and as an infant, uh, it's it's like a lot of uh, time you get to use weapons. Uh, any uh, combat experience that you want to share with us? So like I uh, just mentioned, uh, you know, mental strength. I remember one of those uh, combat experiences we have mm -hmm. numerous, but uh, I remember one anecdote uh, we had. Uh, I was at just about six months of service. And we, had, we were out for a 96 hours operation. Right. It was raining cats and dogs. And we our only ration was those uh, dry shakarbaras and all. That was emergency rations. We carried something like chocolate and all. So I remember we were like out for 72 hours and suddenly, uh, you know, we took a halt. Said, okay, now we'll let us entrench ourselves and then next day morning we'll start. Right. So one of my men, he just came to me and he said, uh, I'm mm. um, now imagine like I was just six months of service like, and this guy was about a senior enough person. Right. But the moment he told me that I'm so you know, the first reaction is, you know, I I just hugged him tightly. Yeah. I said, Don't worry, till then I'm I am there, nothing's going to happen to you. Hmm. So that I still remember that was a testament of the training and whatever we did. Hmm. Uh, it actually came out and then he just calmed down and we made him sleep and sit down for some time and relax. Hmm. And then we were on our Maybe he was panicked enough for that situation. Uh, it? it was sometimes so a person's Mind is a very playful thing. Right. It's actually much more complex than Rubik's Cube. So, you yeah. know, and the problem here is that the Rubik's Cube, 
dynamically there is a hydraulic in it it keeps mo- mo- it keep it moving. keeps moving yeah you know if imagine the cube is moving so you can never get the set pattern what you want exactly you know there are so many things which are going on in your mind you know that you are there for a purpose mm. you know people have entrusted you with a purpose but uh, you know uh, your family issues or your your own health mm. or that particular time of the day you know things anything and everything can happen so that is where the asset test of an officer in the armed forces comes in mm. and uh, uh, because uh, in army there are different kind of battalions so which battalion you belong to and how this battalion system works who uh, goes to which battalion who decides this okay so uh, broadly speaking so let's take an example that we are at war yeah so firstly we we'll like to soften the target yeah. so we have artillery shelling and all those things which are at from a distance right so that is a artillery regiment right then there are uh, tanks and we have bmps which uh, mechanized infantry and the armored corps mm. which move ahead mm. and then there is a the last resort when we see in kargil and all those places because the objectives have to be captured on ground yes that is where infantry comes in mm. and that is the infantry is called the queen of the battle because that is the last last 200 meters fighting that we do depending on the terrain right now this is a if you draw this analogy and you put it in the structure so when a person gets commissioned mm. he opts for different regiments right he wants to join artillery he wants to join armored corps he wants to join infantry mm. and then there are troops which provide supplies which provide clothing ammunition and that kind of needs are also taken care of yes so they opt for it mm. and then it's a well laid out structure uh, there are certain uh, checks and balances which are maintained there are certain uh number of officers get commissioned into certain regiments to keep up the fighting strength uh, intact mm. and then there are certain officers who come to the supply uh, the the you may say the backup or the back end operations so that you know the forward troops are fit right so that's a it, it's actually quite a complex uh, it looks like depending like, on how yeah. many people are retiring on that particular year mm. in that particular year uh, with what time they are retiring so that you know it doesn't come down from a bare minimum sense but then right. the ethos is similar same that the fighting strength you know it is never diluted mm. and uh, because uh, when i have seen when uh, things when people talk about it i have read major articles on army so uh, the, the how army moves towards the battleground there is a set of proportion where how many men will be installed who will providing the artillery from back so is it like uh, the enemy is always trying to uh, you know destroy the artillery section so that the supply gets over or is it some other way that uh, people work around it so so for every uh, so it's all tit for tat uh, yeah. we we take one step and the enemy also plans how to counter that step exactly now we need to be uh, foresight enough to make sure that those contingencies are also met mm-hmm. so obviously the moment a war breaks out yeah uh, then and uh, honestly classically we have not been at war for quite some time yes. like kargil anime had already moved in those positions mm-hmm. and when we wanted to detrench them from those positions they knew that artillery will be one thing that we'll be using yeah so they will carry out counter bombardment in those particular position in those particular areas mm. then we make sure that then we make sure that we camouflage them or we hide them in such a manner that you know or we keep moving them so that enemy is not able to attack in right. those particular positions right uh, then finally when uh, the one of the major successes was because we started using air force to mm. bombard and soften those positions yes. for which probably enemy was less prepared even if they are prepared the surface to air missiles and those kind of things at that altitude they don't work that much mm. then the second part is those armored core or the bmps which come in so right. they have minefields laid for them mm. and there are people who are deployed or the troops who are deployed to counter those with little heavier weapons mm. like rocket launchers or rocket propelled grenades or rcl guns mm. and then finally when the infantry moves in so and the enemy is also where the tactics are almost similar okay right. Right? then we are coming in so they are again anti person mines and then there are light machine guns or heavy machine guns or medium machine guns which right. uh, counter our infantry troop movement mm-hmm. got it uh, a, pl- a player or i would say a, a army official uh, who has been trained to use multiple weapons at times uh, they also get to use the enemy weapons once they encounter them so uh, is an army officer trained to use all the weapons to its utmost uh, visibility or uh, they are just a basic knowledge of every weapon no an army officer for example i was in infantry yeah. so in infantry we have certain weapons which are personal weapons mm. that is used by uh, like personal rifles mm. 
then there are certain weapons which are used one up when i say one up like there is a base of fire which is established in which medium machine guns or heavy machine guns are being deployed right and then at the battalion level there are certain weapons like rocket launchers mm -hmm. which are slightly bigger right or motors which are slightly bigger so as an officer you are supposed to be knowing in and out of each or every weapon yes so even if the weapon goes you know it just stops functioning because of the altitude or maybe because of some reason or mm -hmm. long use yeah you should be capable enough to you know rip that weapon apart repair it immediately and, and then use it again. Get, it again, get it again to use and this is all a part of training that is so it, initial training takes place in the academies yes. the national defense academy and different academies that i mentioned earlier and then once we get commissioned the initially first 3 4 years we go to different schools like infantry school is there in mount okay. so we go there and we get trained on those weapons okay and then how proficient we are in those weapons mm -hmm. is also we we are given those kind of grades and so okay this person can do you know he 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 or she can take care of this weapon right. in and out and when something happens in the nation for example uh, if we have any terrorist attack in some particular regions how does the uh, system work in in terms of uh, who will be the in charge to deploy the army there which will be the first battalion to you know respond uh, to that major locations so like so classically if we see this 2000 uh, like 2611 which took place yes. in march now obviously these are not very regular incidents these yes. are very rare you know attacking a metro of a country or something on those lines so we have national security guard which are the generally the local units mm -hmm. uh, local units are the first respondents which are there right like in uh, mumbai we have an infantry unit in delhi we have infantry units mm -hmm. and other units mm -hmm. so they are the first respondents so army every unit or every regiment gets couple of objectives mm -hmm. that one is the primary objective right and is the secondary objective mm -hmm. and also an objective in case of internal security situations so these are all internal security situations in which you know there is a terrorist attack or maybe you know uh, some kind sometimes there may be riots and there may be different kind of civil emergencies which take place mm -hmm. like natural calamities and all right so army is actually prepared uh, to give okay. help Uh, there are certain procedures where in uh, the district collector requisitions and all those things but, uh, but the all in all army is ready to uh, take care of all these eventualities and then like for example in taj attack then there were specialized troops to be brought in yeah because there those are now house entry drills negotiations so that is what i as i mentioned earlier i was posted as an instructor in contents in general warfare school right. in 2005 6 so we used to teach these things hmm. house entry hostage negotiation and room entry in that kind of stuff yes uh, aircraft entry yeah. you know, anti hijacking drills and all yeah. so those people are like national security guard is specifically trained for that hmm. so then they move in the aim is very simple that minimum collateral damage in our country would be follow is minimum collateral damage yes and we still feel even though terrorists and all who are you know fighting a, a war which them, themselves don't know which side they are on yes but they still most of them are part of our own they there are youth only which are slightly mm -hmm. disoriented and we need to get them back to the main street yes and uh, they are talking about this uh, trainings that you told about uh, i have heard that there are a lot of uh, that in every flight there is a, a military officer which uh, is unidentified and he takes care of uh, just being there as a passenger and ensuring that if an hijack situation is there he is there to react to it so i have to tell you i have to kill you <laughs> <laughs> okay then we should not talk about it <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, certain specialized units which yeah. take care of this yes and uh, uh, is it's not easy to even uh, clear that uh, because there is a intense uh, security checks uh, to get into a flight still uh, i don't think it's not too often but yeah still people uh, who have those intentions have sometimes uh, go gone through those security checks so uh, gorav in for every security to make make sure that a place is secure there are mm -hmm. multiple grids which are laid out uh, only sit, making one person said like you rightly said it may not solve all the purpose mm -hmm. when i said multiple grids there are at national level certain people are working there are people who are working at you know at the state level then down below so those three four checks and that is why you know what billing our country is not face such kind of dangers yes. uh, in recent past there is a guy who wants to get into an army and he would 12th class man so how can they plan this because uh, i because at when i was in i think 11 to 12 there was a dream in back of my mind to get into army 
बट आई नेवर हैड दैट राइट गाइडेंस कि करना कैसे एंड व्हाट इज द राइट थिंग दैट अ पर्सन शुड डू टू गेट इनटू आर्मी गॉट अ अमेजिंग क्वेश्चन बिकॉज़ लाइक आई मेंशन अर्लियर सर्विस सिलेक्शन बोर्ड सो आई जस्ट गिव यू अ ब्रीफ ऑफ how we select officers for the army yes. before i get on to the procedure proper because yes. it's a it's a very beautiful it's a beautiful process mm. so you see a prism yeah. and uh, like humne jo science mein padha tha ki ek ray of light usko mm. baat karte hain and there's a pattern which is formed yes um, now this ray of light has got seven colors mm-hmm. let's ex- assume that this ray has 15 colors okay so those 15 are officer like qualities okay we bombard this prism prism with that ray of light and that is the personality which we are now shifting it through okay. and the pattern which is formed at conscious subconscious and unconscious level of personality okay that is that pattern dictates whether that person is suitable to join the armed forces or not mm. because there will be different situations different level of pressures right mental stamina has to be at its peak mm. so it is not only ki maine ek nara laga diya ki bharat mata ki jai ya or vande mataram or something like that it has to actually translate on ground Mm-hmm. without speaking anything in those pressure situations got it so every layer of your personality has to be aligned to that mm-hmm. so if there is congruence then only you will get selected yes having told us i actually urge through you or through the uh, by this media i would actually urge that all youngsters should at least apply for services selection board okay because what happens is that you get a very different feeling of uh, your own personality mm-hmm. because now that i mentioned the way we select yeah all three kind of tests are aligned towards that mm. and they are aligned so that how a personality would behave in a war like situation right so you actually it's a revelation when you go for such an interview you find okay i have behaved in this manner is this my personality or you know you get to know about things yourself yes and like the great uh, sunzu said if you know yourself then you'll never face defeat in battle even if you know your enemy it doesn't really matter you have to know yourself yes, first yes Having said this, there are 21 different entries from mm-hmm. which 16 and a half to 42 years of age you can join the armed forces. Okay. In National Defence Academy and as a Territorial Army officer as well. Okay. Um, everything is available online these days. How you can apply? There are twice in a year. There are there are exams, written mm-hmm. exams. Mm-hmm. There are certain entries after 12. You have science team. You have certain percentage of marks. Different criteria are there, and then you can straight away apply for an interview. If you are shortlisted, you will be called for a services selection board interview somewhere. Right. So it is the ways you can give a written exam. If you think that you don't have time to give a written exam, or you are overwhelmed with your ID, JEE preparation, and those kind of stuff, hmm. you can you know directly walk. There are walk-in interviews also, but you need to apply for that. And if you are shortlisted, you can apply. Then it's a walk-in interview, and you can just uh, you present. Can, you can just present your credentials, hmm. and uh, if you are shortlisted. that is you apply online hmm. the upsc sites and uh, the we have our recruiting sites hmm. and they can uh, and you must when once you go there hmm. then uh, there are initial two parts of the interview one yes. is your stage one in which because there is as i mentioned there are non they walk in interviews as well so hmm. you can imagine in our country you know walk in interviews is like uh, two bigger numbers to have people coming here so we sift them initial we see their basic personality traits okay. are they is there any is there probability of this person getting recommended or clearing becoming an officer after training mm. in the second stage as well so we keep the person okay and then we subject him or her to about four four, four more days of tests in which as i what i mentioned earlier your all parts of personality are checked right and then you are recommended right so you have served the army for more than 20 years so 20 saal ek kaam karne ke baad jab aap usse chhodte hain so i think there is a lot of emotional uh, things attached to that particular thing that you have been into so how do you feel after leaving army uh, after that so generally they say ki uh, army se aap bahar nikal sakte ho army ko bahar nahi nikal sakte kisi yeah. so that will be there till the time i hit my grave i think wo to rahegi mere sath hamesha right the only difference is i was fighting so i generally uh, one another uh, theory that i propagate is that everybody is a soldier mm. you know there are certain soldiers in uniform but then everybody is fighting a different battle right maybe on the border somebody at home somebody, somebody mentally, mentally yeah. so everybody is fighting a war mm. it is only that the battlefield has now changed mm. but the war is still on uh, i there are so many things that i want to do for the society yeah. that i have society has given me so much the social status that we get after becoming an army officer the kind mm. of respect we have been getting mm. now it is time to give back yes so i have just Change the battlefield. Uh, mm. The fight is still on. <laughs> and then you have moved into the entrepreneurship journey now. 
So a bit about your entrepreneurship journey, how you are building this new venture that you are uh, up to now. So Bharu, when I, while in armed forces also, when we used to interview, uh, so seven years actually is a long time, very, very long time. When you, four years being there and seeing those personalities, right. and three years I was posted in Delhi in Defense Institute of Psychological Research. A lot of research used to go out, mm. used to read a lot of case studies and sorry, find different things. I realized that there is a huge gap uh, in our country, as far as skilling is concerned, hmm. you know, we have aspirations. We are we are today a very mixed, uh, you know, in a very confused state of mind, right. especially the Gen Zs and Gen Alphas, because we see a lot of things which are there on television. Uh, you know, everything is hunky dory and everything hmm. is fine. You know, you can just earn today, spend tomorrow, and day after tomorrow, earn again, and day, right. day after spend. But what we are not realizing is that till the time we upskill ourselves, till the time we empower ourselves or enable ourselves, this is a myth. Mm. We are talking about a country which has got negative population rise in the Western countries, some of them. And in our country, wherein the population is, you know, geometrically increasing. You are number one now. You are number one yeah. now. <laughs> so you can't, you can't have, you can't compare apples and oranges yes. in one aspect and then in another aspect you say no, I will do this and 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 stay outside, home stays and I will do this and I will do this. And then for suddenly something like Covid struck and then we realized that mommy and papa have to go to the office because we don't have to eat because we don't have to eat. So this was the area which I found that you know it appealed to me uh, as a person, a student of psychology as well. And then I joined Philips Education uh, because of that, yeah. because they were into empowering and enabling those, uh, skilling those children in advanced manufacturing technologies. Right. And the results were phenomenal. So we were, I was really happy what we were doing. And then uh, for some reason, I had to come back to Delhi. I moved to Mumbai for a year. I had to come back to Delhi. And then I said, let me larger the canvas, canvas further. Mm -hmm. I was again 21 years. I was working in a particular zone. Right. Then corporate one year, I'm again working in a particular zone. Mm. Uh, I also need to free myself when I'm telling everybody to pursue their dreams. You know, I should also pursue it. And the first thing which came to my mind was, let's start an honest service provider, mm. which is providing skilling right. at a cost which even the lowest run or lowest start of society of our country can afford. Mm. And today when, when I reached out to people and when I, we, I started having conversations, I found that there are people who want to help. Mm. The only thing is they don't know whom to reach out to extend that help to. Right. And having worked in this particular area, identify those gaps, mm. finding out uh, state in almost 12, 13 states of our country, seeing them at, you know, microscopic level as well. Mm. And thought that there, there is a lot to be done. Mm. So in Mincio, the name of my venture, yes. which roughly translates in Italian, in English it is uh, inconquerable. Right. So I, if in one lifetime, my aim is that at least I should be able to make a large part of the young population, they should, for them, they are not conquered by anything. Right. No situation, no kind of, div, uh, you know, lack of scaling or anything can conquer them. Mm -hmm. They are able to conquer whatever mountains come into them. Yes. So that is where we started in Vinciu yeah. about a couple of weeks back and the results have been okay right. uh, so far. And we hope it grows because it's a purpose driven uh, venture, I think. Thank you so much. Yes. And uh, uh, apart from this, uh, the next question that I was talking about was uh, today's youth. So I have read a few articles from your end talking about L2, L2, L. So can you explain what that means? Because that is uh, getting a lot of traction from people on LinkedIn as well. That is coming from you. So I, uh, the first thing, uh, what I felt that we, what we are missing. Mm. So if you, if you see at macroscopic level, we are just learning to survive today. Right. And especially the younger population, like, okay. And what happens is that when we learn to survive, we are equating ourselves to any other species. Mm. Because evolution has brought us to this level, ki our existential crises are over now. Right. Now we need to learn to live. Mm. And the human species is the only one which is that power of learning so that they can live properly. Mm. And then they live again to learn so yes. that they can further elevate their own status. So that is this hashtag of L2L2L, learn to live to learn. So rather than learning to survive. That's, That's amazing. 
uh, any one message that you want to give to the youth listening to this podcast today because uh, we have a lot of youth audience who listens to this so any message from your end uh, lieutenant colonel ankur sabarwal please thank you so much gaurav it has been amazing uh, on this independence day i would urge everyone that your soldier will fight for you yeah. till his or their last breath or last last breath but be a good citizen which is worth who is worth fighting for yes uh, let's let's rather than focusing on the the destructive or the negative part of it focus how you can contribute positively to the society to the nation and uh, it's one person which makes a nation because one person and then become two two becomes four yes. that's how nations are created and they become successful that's the biggest learning i think we can take that uh, become a citizen that is worth fighting for that soldiers are giving their lives on and we should be that uh, valuable enough in ourselves for this uh, that was great uh, and uh, just to, before we end this you know i had this uh, thing in mind that uh, when i was going through your profile i got to know that you were also a soft skill trainer and a life coach so how did you get into this because uh, having a career at army uh, being at army and then moving on to this uh, what made you do that so gaurav uh, like when we talk about personality yeah. so as i mentioned how we assess a particular personality so personality is not what it what i am what you are today mm. personality is a homogeneous mixture of what you were mm. as a child and bringing up and growing up what you are today and what you will be what your future aspirations are got it now what happens is we keep dwindling between the past and the future and the present mm. it, and the problem or the most of the problem that anybody faces is because we are not able to balance between these three mm. something which has happened something which is happening and something is about to happen right when we and in armed forces you know uh, we have to when we go for an operation or we go for you know a, maybe a small battle or skirmish or any kind of uh, we prepare for anything we always take everything into consideration right and we see how what would have happened you know we learn lessons from them mm. we make our plans today based on them mm. so that we are not that mistakes are not repeated and the positives are taken into consideration so that the future outcomes will be better right so it perfectly fell in place of how a personality and at the larger picture mm. you know life being an operation in itself you know you just need to prepare well right. and you have to make sure that what you did yesterday sh- don't repeat it today and for future you should be planned and you should prepare so okay. that gave me little insight of how you know one can help people to negotiate this particular pendulum mm-hmm. and make it more static more stable right and then i started taking a couple of corporate sessions and uh, started interacting with the people and they it actually resonated with them mm-hmm. they understood and when i say personality it has got so much going on communication empathy problem solving stamina stability right so if you start and everybody is got crest and tough mm. there are certain parts of our personality which are like they, they are sky high amazing communication skills mm. but then probably empathy it is at a lower end or problem solving is amazing and maybe mental stamina is slightly less so then i started addressing those problems right. so i um, i i feel that there is no personality or no person who's good bad or ugly Mm. it is only situational right so if you are able to balance and manage that particular situation then you will be able to do that mm. so when i so for students of class uh, like who are in school mm. 8 9 10 11 onwards working professionals people who are planning to join armed forces or something like that right so it is a, it, everything is about life and how it can be coached to achieve a particular target right so it resonated and then i pivoted in that particular area as well Mm. and it is it is working well people are getting benefited so i am i am happy that so because you have been into a lot of corporates and met a lot of people don't you feel that uh, because the basic need of a human uh, for work was roti kapra makan earlier but now it has changed a lot because that has already been accomplished by the parents and now the today's generation they are running up for maybe the designation status or something else mm. so again amazing question gaurav because so Uh, let's say we are just a 75 year old society let's call it that mm. after partition actually after independence not partition interaction after independence actually you know we started thinking about different things in life yeah so our grandparents they took care of the basic needs that mm. we had and our parents made sure that 
those physical needs and safety needs are met. Like there's a Maslow's need hierarchy which is there. Now, we did not face existential crisis. Mm -hmm. For us, survival was not a problem. So then we, or wo, there's a popular ad, no? life mein aram to ideas are so yeah. abo, now the next generation now life may around yeah. because they're not fighting for a daily bread mm -hmm. most of it yeah. they're not fighting for a roof over their head they're right. not fighting for they are now so what have what has happened is they have pushed themselves in a gray zone mm -hmm. ye nahi ho, kis ke liye designation ke liye mm -hmm. social status ke liye mm -hmm. sirf enjoy karne ke liye uh, why I am saying it with a little bit of uh, self-belief is because I went through a lot of annual reports because when last year I was appearing in different corporate interviews, I saw the at executive entry level, there were people who were like some huge banks, multinationals, thousands of crores turnovers in the country, their attrition rate was 47-50%. Hmm. It's unfathomable. How come one year you have to say that you don't have to do this so then I, I went into little detail, started interviewing a couple of them hmm. as an interaction over a cup of coffee. Then they said, ki, sir, the boss told me a little bit. He called me Saturday. And he was like, he was So I asked them, ki, exactly what is it? He was like, he was like, he was like, he was like, so they said, no, but sir, man, nahi <laughs> no, man, now on is not quantifiable. Man, to kuch bhi nahi ho sakta. Ab yehi agar aap unko ek aise zone mein dal do, jo ki black hai, jisme do ghar wale khana nahi denge, aur ghar sar pe chhat nahi hai, to boss bhi acha lagega, ghar ki aad bhi nahi aayegi, aur sab kuch hoga. When you ask me that question, ki uh, what, 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 uh, what are today's generation is facing? Actually, they themselves don't know. See, you have an objective, hota hai. you have a target, you want to meet that target. Exactly. So, the target is blur. Hai pura. Yeah. There's no target, there's no goal setting. Yeah. So, that is where I, as a life coach, I came in. Ki, how can a person set goals? Because this has to be milestone based. Right. I may say, ki, before I die, I should have 10 crores in my account. Mm -hmm. Possible. Mm -hmm. But then you have to work accordingly. accordingly. Yeah. So, I think we are good to go. And uh, uh, thank you so much for being uh, available for us today for this special podcast. And we really appreciate your presence. Thank here. you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.